Hey, I'm Lovitz. Jokes and bullshit aside, welcome back to HFE, guys. Our game, as you guessed already, EF Göteborg against Aiko, round 28 of Allsvenskan, the fiercest rivalry of Sweden besides the local derbies. The two largest clubs of the two biggest cities of Sweden are playing today. First of all, thanks a lot for both these jerseys I included in this very bad joke in the beginning, which definitely should not be repeated. So as some of you know, I've been traveling to Sweden to watch and film football for almost a year and made some friends, including Oiko and EF Göteborg supporters. And I got some jerseys as presents, which I'm gonna show you. So the Oiko jersey is one of this year's jerseys. Incredibly nice with the Stockholm map on it. Good at the new signing. And the other one, I got that actually last week after the Malmö game. It's also like one of the one of the older jerseys of uh, EFK back when Prioritet Finance was the sponsor. Who are you going to sponsor right now? So thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate both these jerseys a lot. Allsvenskan's 28th match day. Both teams had a poor season, however. Oiko have the chance for a European spot in these last three rounds. This pairing is the most frequently played game in the Swedish first tier. No teams have met each other more times than EF Göteborg and Oiko. EFK are the more successful team with 18 league titles, 8 cup titles and 2 UEFA Cups. However, Oiko are the stronger side in recent years having won the league in 2018. If Göteborg's last league title dates back to 2007. There is a big twist in the story as well. These two teams played a league title decider game in 2009 with EF Göteborg's current coach, Stare, being Oiko's coach back then. The match took place in the same stadium we are visiting today, Gamla Ullevi. EFK led at halftime and Oiko turned it around in the second half and won the league title. Oiko supporters invaded the pitch. Imagine the scenes. We will be lucky if we avoid a fight between the two fan bases today. A lot of content of Swedish games on the channel so far. Incredible experiences with both of these clubs. Hit the link in the description to see them. Honestly, I have so much respect for both of these clubs despite of the fact that I prefer one of them a bit more than the other. If you don't know yet, you'll see. They both have large fan bases contributing to the extraordinary football culture of this country. That's it, I'll fly to Gothenburg now and we'll see you there in the next cut. But before we go, I wanted to let you know, I always commented the games and I tried various microphones after like a typical student using this low budget <laughs> solution. This is uh, the the headphone of my iPhone and it just taped it together and, and spoke to the microphone, but the, the sound quality became incredibly poor and the other mics did not work out either. So I wanted to let you know that I won't use the microphone for, uh, for filming the game itself. So you might not be able to hear my commentary, which I always do that clearly, but I'll use it for the selfie cuts. So like after the goals or the halftime analysis, you'll hear them all. So yeah, I think that's quite a big change, but I hope it's going to be enjoyable regardless. And let's go now. See you in Gothenburg. Match day 24th of October 2022. Rainy Gothenburg is not an unusual sight in the autumn. The Poseidon statue is that way. That's the number one symbol of the city. And also it's featured in the club's anthem. We won't go there now. I went there when I did a city tour about Gothenburg, link in the description, second link, you can watch that if you want, that was about a year ago. We'll go to Gamla Ullevi, the stadium of EFK, which is about a kilometer from here. We'll walk through Heden, where there are pretty many football pitches for training here. That's the old stadium of EFK there, Ullevi. Oh, look what we have there. The first view on Gamla Ullevi. Oh, here are some Oiko supporters heading to the away section. There are some more to the left. 
there. Just be careful with filming, right? Here we are, Gamla Ulevi, open in 2009, capacity of 18,416 people, home of legendary matches, including the one I mentioned in the intro, although that's not so legendary from the EFCO point of view. <laughs> Here's the shop. I think I won't go inside now. Been there countless times. Bought some stuff. It's a great place. Here I am in front of the shop with a young EFCO supporter. Are you a lifelong supporter of Blowit? Of course. Yeah, of course. The, the best team in the world. How do you see today's game? Score prediction and who will score? I think uh, Gaston will uh, we score two and we're going to win 2 1. Are you going to be in Commando Brüggen or one of the regular? Yes, the, in the middle, so it's perfect. It's the best places. What do you think of the last home game against Malmö? Uh, it was very good. The limbs was, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. So uh, hopefully we can see the same today. We'll go inside now. We'll have to go around the stadium to section L3. That's exactly the same where I was filming a week ago against Malmö. Link in the description to that game as well. Third link. This is the entrance of Commando Bruggan, the home ultra section, away supporters on the other side. So like people can look outside to the streets. It's a great design of the stadium. Gate number nine is ours. Not too long queues now, about 40 minutes to go until kickoff I guess. Guys, you recognize this legend. Anything about today's game? Only hey, I blow it. Incredible feeling meeting Marcus Bad still a bit under the effect of it. Hey, I blow it. It's about Oiko's nickname Naga, that means rats. They're obviously making fun of this nickname, the whole supporters.
Number one striker Marcus Berg of EF Göteborg is missing today, obviously that's why we could make that really short interview with him. So the captain is Oscar Wendt, birthday boy. Happy birthday to you, Oscar. as well. Gustav Nurlin have to come up because of injury, we'll see. He 
you can come back perhaps. the back to Svensson. He insists on the one against one and crosses now. 27th minute, that's some in the memory of Ivan Turina, Oigo's former keeper. He died in 2013 if I'm correct. His number was 27. Tribute from the Oiko fans to him. Every game in the 27th minute. You can see the banner there with his name. Oigo Corner. the ball and he gets a corner Oiko can launch one last attack in the first half Opinions about this first half? Uh, it was uh, kind of good. Like uh, we got uh, like uh, Oiko is a big team and uh, we play very well for being uh, like uh, IFK Gothenburg right now because we're not like informed because we have lost versus Degfors and Helsingborg and uh, so and uh, we played like good but. The referee could be better. This young gentleman in this halftime interview went absolutely crazy last week against Malmo. He was sitting next to me. What a great guy. Thanks so much more for getting on screen when you see this. About this first half, it was quite similar to the one against Malmo last week. Oiko are clearly the dominant side on the pitch. They had some chances, but not really big chances. Back and forth type of game. Many balls given away. Blovit had a few chances, but Oiko were much, much stronger. Hoping for a better second half, definitely. Here we are celebrating EFCO's women's team. They won the fourth tier of Swedish football midweek. No, not midweek. It was yesterday, actually, on Sunday. Congrats to the ladies. They were amazing. They won 2-0. And this is actually not the league winning game. They won the league earlier and now they won the playoffs. So they are going up to the third tier.
decent save by Han. Great pass by Ayesh Clinical finish, bottom left by Markovic, signing in the summer from North Hyoping. One nil FK, what a goal. This noise is incredible guys, incredible. take the corner in my opinion but it doesn't it just comes up 40 seconds remaining from the game
Ten. Here the evening lights of Gothenburg, you can see why it's called the state of mind. Oh, incredible, incredible experience. Oiko got pushed further away from a European spot with this defeat with two rounds remaining in the league. A defeat which was actually pretty unjust for them. The statistics are on their side. EFK won the game with their only shot on target, but nobody cares about this in the city right now, I guess. It was awesome to meet Marcus Berry. He's injured right now. Unfortunately, he's actually the kind of person I imagine. He's been capped 90 times for the Swedish national team, scored 24 goals. Yet he's a very humble, down-to-earth person. I think it's not a common example in the modern world. I didn't use the microphone today for recording the atmosphere. The sound was clearer in my opinion. However, the noise at the goal was captured quite differently. I think it didn't give back as much as in the Mama game last week with the microphone. Please let me know which one of the two sounds you prefer since it's your channel. Well, it's my channel as a content creator, but your channel as a consumer. And as we know, Football is all about the supporters. A YouTube channel is also all about its viewers. So drop me a comment about this. If you're from abroad, don't miss the Swedish football culture. The title of this video is not a coincidence. It's exceptional over here. You have to experience it. Match tickets can be easily found online. Make sure you check the Sweden playlist and the channel related social media accounts for more content. Thanks for joining me for this video, which took half an hour away from your life. I hope it was worth it. I was AJFE, hoping to see you in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.